Welcome in to the Fun Astrology Podcast. Thomas Miller, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome aboard to this Tuesday, September 12th. We have a special call here that we're going to listen to in just a second. But let's take a look at the sky above our heads. Before we do that, there's not much. <laughs> the moon changes signs early, early tomorrow morning, but it's a longer void, of course, than we've seen in the past. It begins at 11.05 this morning in Leo. It's over 14 hours long, and the moon enters Virgo tomorrow morning early at 1.18 a.m. Those times are always Eastern. You know, as part of these readings that I'm doing now, we are taking horary questions. But one of the considerations before judgment in horary astrology is that the moon cannot be void of course. So don't be picking up any horary questions this afternoon. <laughs> it won't do you any good. And that's really part of the problem with doing that is you're not supposed to know that. You know, you're supposed to cast the chart randomly. But when you follow this all the time, you know, well, like Tuesday afternoon, the moon's void, of course, in the evening. So it will be out of the picture. Now, you remember that yod also from last week, the south node of the moon at the top of the yod, and then the base planets that are connected by a sextile aspect, Neptune and Uranus. We said it was going to be over a month, and it is still there. And you know, with Uranus at one side of the base, which is in Taurus, which is ruled by Venus, which just came out of retrograde, let's just think about this for a minute, and then the other side of the base is Neptune in Pisces, which of course Neptune is in the sign that it rules, but also Pisces in ancient astrology before Neptune came along was ruled by Jupiter, and Jupiter is within seven degrees of Uranus on the other side of the base. Jupiter expands. We had level up on Sunday night and so many people still talking about some of the things that have been going around while this Mercury retrograde period has been in effect of particularly frauds and scams and things like that. Other life changes coming up under these aspects. And there's that Jupiter, there's that expansion of the unusual, the unexpected. The sure didn't see that coming. But remember, the south node is at the top of this yod in Libra. So Venus has a big seat at the table in this thing as well. So there's your money, finances, home, love, relationships, etc. That whole Venusian package. Also, what is important to you, and because Uranus is in Taurus, we have the money component as well. So, that is definitely a hyperactive yod, especially relating to cleaning out our closets, cleaning out our karma, and sometimes with some major disruption. Okay, now let's pivot. We, you remember last week we talked about Burning Man? And I knew, I knew, I knew that we would have somebody at Burning Man certainly listening to the Fun Astrology podcast, at least before or after, if they couldn't get it down in there. And we did. This precious jewel of a listener called and left us a message of her experience at Burning Man, and I really wanted you to hear this, especially the inflections and tones and words that she uses to express what Burning Man 2023 was like for her. Hi, Thomas. Love the podcast. Um, I did go to Burning Man. It was an incredible experience. We got there a day early since we were leading a theme camp. This is my first time leading a theme camp. This was my sixth burn. We had an incredible five days before the rains came. Super magical, beautiful, gorgeous weather. Um, I didn't go last year, but I heard how hot it was. So I was very blessed to have cool weather. And then the rains came. I had definitely a lot of emotional reaction to this since I'm you know, in charge of um, the area and leaving no trace and in charge of my campmates' comfort and safety. And so I definitely broke down in tears a couple of times. I was like, oh my God, Burning Man's ruined. Oh my God, what are we going to do? And the uncertainty of not knowing how many days we'd be trapped there. Um, you definitely don't want to drive on those roads. The, the mud there is different than normal mud. It's very sticky. And so we walked around with garbage bags taped on our shoes. Everybody came together. It was the most beautiful coming together community I've ever seen in my life. I felt totally loved and supported and cared for. Everyone else did as well. And, you know, if you had something, you gave it. If you needed something, you asked for it. And it was it was beautiful. So we got to stay a couple extra days. Then man burned on Monday, on Labor Day. Magical. And then we were able to leave on Tuesday. So it was amazing. I feel like the media blew it out of proportion, but you know that's to be expected. Um, anyway, just wanted to let you know my perspective. Bless. 
Oh, thank you so much for that report. And I so appreciate you calling because I knew that this was out there, that there were people there who were on their highest timeline, regardless of the circumstances. If you remember when Burning Man began, the sun was opposite Saturn. Mars was at 29 degrees Virgo. There were just signatures of challenge built into the natal chart, if you will, of the Burning Man experience for this year. Well, that was certainly fulfilled. But, you know, her comments remind me so much of Paramhansa Yogananda's comment. You give me the most inauspicious time in the sky to start something, and I will start it, and it will be a success. And this is a man that, no question, <laughs> picked the time of his soul's transition. Man, that is high timeline, powerful living. Well, thank you so much for that report. I was just thrilled to hear that come in over the weekend. All right, you guys have a wonderful Tuesday. I love you, and I will see you back tomorrow for Hump Day.